Hi, today we've got Jeff from Northampton. Hi, Jeff, how are you? I'm fine, thank you very much. That's good. Great to see you. And you too. Uh, Jeff was one of our Volunteer Week winners, um, but I'll let him tell you all about that later. Uh, first of all, can you start to tell us your, your stroke journey, your story from your stroke and take us through to now? Sure. Um, the first stroke was um, in uh, 2011, um, when one Sunday, um, decorating at home, I realised that uh, I couldn't get up from the bench I was sitting on and staggered into the house and um, realised something was wrong. And uh, within five or ten minutes, um, the paramedics came and carted me off to hospital. And uh, yes, I had a stroke. I'd had a, had a hemorrhagic one and so lost the use of um, my left arm. Luckily, I'm right-handed, so could still uh, could still um, function that way. Um, and after some physiotherapy and some help from the hospital, um, they put me on early release and um, went home. Um, but of course, that stopped me working. I was supported by a good employer. Um, for the last 37 years, I've sold bicycles. So um, the bike trade was in my blood and I managed to get back to work and uh, albeit on reduced hours. But um, and got, and that went okay. Uh, unfortunately, in 2016, I had another stroke uh, where I was I was up a ladder in crew, believe it or not, and um, had a stroke um, that an ischemic one. That's that time on the other side, so it affected my voice. And for some aphasia sufferers. Mm. You might think that um, there's nothing wrong with my voice, but it's not as powerful and as good as it was before the my second stroke, by no means. Um, the singing voice is gone. Mm. But um, some people think, some people say that's a good thing. <laughs> so, uh, but, um, and we'd already moved. Uh, we'd already moved to a bungalow uh, to uh, make life a bit easier for, as as we both get older, my wife and I. Mm -hmm. So we'd done that. Um, but um, the second stroke brought it home to me that, you know, these things happen. They come out of the blue. There's no warning. There's, uh, you've got no time to prepare yourself mm. uh, which is what you and people are having strokes all the time and as we know uh, through different strokes and other charities and hospitals um, every week someone's having a stroke and being left like me not knowing what to do next yes I was I was told of different strokes on a Christmas card back in uh, back in 2011 and a Christmas card with a little um, old fashioned different strokes cards. Some of you might remember them. They were sort of yellow and green and they might be some still knocking around the office. <laughs> and, Probably. <laughs> and um, from one of my nieces and she put this in and I thought, haven't heard of them uh, because unfortunately um, the, stroke, the Stroke Association were not as helpful as I would have liked, mm. but uh, they, they have um, different priorities and different organisation. So I went along to 
uh, different strokes Northampton, which then was run by Janice and uh, Jerry Johnson. And um, realized that other people in the same boat as me that didn't know where to go, didn't know what to do next. And I thought, yeah, this I can help with. And uh, Jerry was very much a, an inclusive person mm. and wanted to spread the group as wide and as broad as he could and so asked for help in certain areas and so there was a sort of small committee of people that uh, would get together and organize the the meetings and so I started helping there and um, as the time went by Jerry um, decided to take a, a sabbatical uh, uh, because his health was not improving um, and sadly um, a heart attack um, finished him and uh, we lost him um, a few years ago now. So uh, we were in a position where uh, the group of us, uh, including Joyce Smith, uh, could carry on the group. And that's what we've been doing. Joyce. Joyce's husband, John, is uh, got some issues from his stroke. And so Joyce has, again, um, retired from joint coordinator. Mm -hmm. She did that the other year. And so um, I lead the team now of about, there's four or five of us um, who hold the group together. And... Um, to my surprise, um, one or two of the group nominated me for the Peter Strange Award, which um, I received on behalf of the group and for all the people that um, work for towards uh, different strokes Northampton growing. So, um, and then just for the heck of it, two strokes I didn't think was enough. And so this year, I, I had a, a brain hemorrhage um, and ended up in John Radcliffe in Oxford, uh, where they drilled a hole in my head. Of course. Um, but, um, and they, apparently they still use Black and Deckers. <laughs> and as I've said to Peter, I thought, I mean, we're in this day and age, I thought dear Waltz or Makita would have been, you know, I mean, when other, other power tools are available. Yeah. Um, um, so, but for John Radcliffe, uh, which is a regional centre for uh, mm. neurosurgery, apparently it's quite normal for them to do this sort of thing. And um, after a, one setback, I seem to be on the road to recovery again. So um, we've, uh, I shall carry on for as long as I can and um, help as many people as I can. You know, as I say, the, the COVID has meant that different strokes, Northampton, and of course, along with the other groups, has not been able to meet and give support to the, the new, new sufferers and survivors that must be out yes. there um but hopefully this summer going on to the autumn we should be back up to helping the people that, that need it the most yes and getting those new members in as well and what have you tell us a bit about different strokes in Northampton what activities do you get up to because every every group's different so it's always nice to hear what you do okay uh, we meet weekly uh, at a local community centre um, and we have uh, exercise uh, instructors from uh, a couple of uh, different organisations who help. We have about 20 to 30 uh, attendees most weeks. Um, tea and coffee 
is obligatory. <laughs> um, and um, if the more people that bring in cakes, the better. <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah. Um, we're thinking about um, doing a, a birthday list uh, uh, this autumn, not uh, so we can celebrate people's birthdays. Uh, again, it, it's a, a a ploy to get to get get more cake. It's, I was just going to say it sounds like that. <laughs> I um, think I might have to pop up sometime. <laughs> Sheila, uh, any anybody can drop in. Um, we we ask for a, a small membership fee, which we waive for the first few weeks. Um, so that we've got enough funds to keep keep things running. Yeah. Um, I feel that, and people then own the group and yes. uh, you know get used to giving a little bit back for the, for what help they do get. So say we we have a wonderful lady who comes and teaches Chinese pole exercises. Oh. Um, that sounds interesting. Yeah, Liz uh, has brought back from China this uh, system of, uh, it's basically like a, a bamboo pole that we use, but it, it's, and it's not any, you can do it sitting down, you can do it standing up. It's really related to anybody that, um, that can come, but of course, holding a pole and she asks us, Liz asks us to hold the poles with both hands. Um, so the good hand helps the bad hand. Yeah. And so we, you know, um, so it's, that's something we like to do. We have um, some instructors from, from the company uh, Physio Function who come and they're changing their styles. Uh, slightly for the coming season, um, we have uh, we have trips out and trying to well we nearly got one arranged for the Black Country Living Museum oh, uh, yes. summer uh, and book the coach and then lockdown changed all <laughs> of that so um, we was in touch with them and we hope to get that running soon. Um, but um, it's mainly if, if, for instance, we get an instructor who, for whatever reason, uh, can't come, yeah. and so we've got a free week, our lot are quite happy to sit and drink coffee. And eat cake. And, kick. <laughs> and do what uh, most of us have missed over the last year, which is get to know people. And yes. it's one of the phrases I hear, and we, I, you go around our group and people will say, I've had a problem with uh, funding on, from, from something, from PIP or whatever. And somebody will turn around and say, yes, I had that. And it's that shared knowledge mm. and shared experience that a group of people can help with and, yes you know that that's what we miss as we found out it's just that so being sociable and getting together is one of the things that we didn't realize was the most important thing in our lives to and I don't we don't go abroad very often um, but what I find isolating when we do um, when we do go to somewhere that doesn't normally speak English, is how isolating it is to be mm. in a country where you don't understand the language. Our, yeah. dear our dear daughter lives in America. I call her my dear daughter because she costs us a lot of money. <laughs> but um, of course, and you go over there and you think you think you're going to understand everybody, but they don't understand you. No. That's America. France and Italy, um, we went to France once and 
because um, again, my daughter said, if, if you're not going aboard, I'm not coming. <laughs> uh, so, but again, that isolation that you feel when you're mm. not, when you can't understand the language, and it's our fault. It's yes. not. It's not. It's not their fault. They live there. But um, so, so having having a social group and getting together is one of the most important things I think that, that different strokes exercise groups can do. And um, realizing that you know we can all fall over together. Yes. We can all, but we can all support each other together. And we, you know, um, as I say, and we have meals out again. Um, we go bowl, um, different strokes that goes 10 pin bowling. Um, and uh, that's always well supported. Yeah. Um, and Christmas meals, uh, we found, we had a ha Halloween meal, that was fun. Oh, um, we found we've in, instead again. Um, basically, um, most of our uh, meetings um, center on food. <laughs> well, that's not a bad thing, is it? No, oh, it seems to work. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's, but um, it's just a case of getting everybody together um, yes. and letting them and say, if if we do have spare time, it's quite, we don't have to do anything. Yeah. You just put them in the same, put them in the same room and they chat. And we've noticed even with the aphasia sufferers, again, um, we have an, we have a a separate group for that uh, on a on an alternate Mondays mm. uh, called aphasia conversations, whereby um, people can sometimes not not say so much and just be themselves. Yes. And not have to explain. I think that's the, the good thing about stroke survivors all getting together is that you don't have to try and explain how X, Y and Z feels because we're all in it together and you, you know. So you can just get on and support each other with whatever. And it's all about making you feel that you're not the only one. Right. Because that's how I think we all feel initially when we've had a stroke. You think, "Why me? Am I the only one?" You know, and you're we're we're not we're not. This is what we found. My wife said uh, from our group and church friends, we uh, we knew nobody else that had had a stroke. Mm. So we that we'd got no no recollection of what what to do next, where to go, you exactly. know, um, and all of a sudden on a Sunday lunchtime, bang, you get, you know, and here was me, it was, it was November, I thought, yes, we're, you know, we're gearing up for Christmas now. Um, I used to, I used to run bike shops and working in a bike shop coming up to Christmas is not for the faint hearted. <laughs> no. Um, and I realised all of a sudden I wasn't going to work on a Monday morning, arranging deliveries and collections and mm. assembly of bikes, but um, I'm going to be laying in hospital and getting, you know, and I used to, I used to joke uh, and I used to try, we used to have a lot of, up to one, one firm, I'd got four, four shops I used to work for. And um, I would joke to staff and say, um, if you um, make a mistake coming up to Christmas, I will kill you. And then you won't do it again because you'll be dead. <laughs> of course, yes, it was a joke. And 
all of them used to get it. The fact that, you know, we used to say that, funnily enough, this year, Christmas is December the 25th. Mm. And that's different from last year because, but of course, Bill and we would say, I'd say to them that this is what we've, we've got to get it right. It's not just, um, it, it's, it's, it's going to come this year as it did last year, as it did the year before. And we've just got to try and make it right for the, right for the people. So that changed. All of a sudden, yeah. I didn't do Christmas that year, uh, but found different strokes in a January. So thank you very much, different strokes, because otherwise I don't, don't know where I'd be. <laughs> well, I think now, after your award, we need to say thank you very much to you, because I think you've been quite modest in your involvement with the group. I was speaking to Janice earlier. And she's told me how much you've been involved with the group right from from the start doing various things. So yeah. thank you. I've got it here. Fantastic. Look yeah. at that award, everybody. Thank, thank you very much, Different Strokes, for the help that you've given me uh, through the last 10 years and the, the opportunity to help others. You know, um, I don't know what i say it, it, it's something that I didn't expect, but, um, you know, it's gratefully received on, on behalf of the group that uh, in Northampton and all the people that help it. So, um, well, I think we, we, we've all got a, a personal thank you to say to different strokes, but Thank you again, Jeff, for all, all that you do for us as well and help us out and what have you. It's, it's very much appreciated. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, thank you for, for talking to us today and carry on the good work and be careful. No more, <laughs> no more medical interventions. I, no, you look that's after what yourself. I've, that's what I've been told. I've, I've got to take it easy. I mean, with different strokes being closed down for the last year and church being closed down for the last year, I wasn't doing much in the first place. <laughs> and as I've said before, if I do nothing, I'm neither use nor ornament. Yes. Uh, so, because nobody's going to pay me for me look for me looks. <laughs> um, well, hopefully, hopefully, we're not long before you know things get back to. A more normal basis and uh, hope so. you'll yeah. be running around but you've still got to look after yourself because <laughs> we need That's to very true. <laughs> yeah and so we're, we're we're trying to get different strokes back up and running starting this july uh with some outdoor events um but we're not sure and as as our latest newsletter um says we're not sure exactly when we're going to start uh the inside meetings yeah it won't be long Hopefully not, and I'll I'll be popping up sometime for some cake. I think. <laughs> I, Sheila, if you you're going to come up, you've got to bring a cake. Oh, I think I can do that. Yeah, <laughs> I think I can do. It. I'm not promising I'll make it. That might be a disaster, but I'll definitely bring some cake. We had we had one um, made for the uh, uh, one one. Um, trip we had out uh, that was decorated with the different strokes uh, logo. Oh, fair. Um, that was at halfway between here and Milton Keynes. That was at Stoke Bruin. And oh, again, yes. Uh, that went down very well. Um, and just another plug um, the, the co op supermarket gave us um, some support from there from one of their funds and donated uh, about £3,000 towards different structures, wow. um, which went, was, and again, they, they had a cake made for us and we went, we went up and received a cheque and cake from them. And we've got another one, and it's all a case of little things at times. Yes. Um, Mannheim car auctions of, of, 
using as, as their charity of the year. And that was last year, but they've carried it over to this year because of uh, the lockdown. And there's someone going to uh, be walking up uh, Penny Fan uh, All right. again for us. Um, and so we're trying to support her, uh, you know, but of course, being socially distanced, it's not easy. But um, it, little things going ahead and um, trying to keep everything together. Well, that's it. And, you know, while we've got people to do these things for us, you know, it's, it's, it's keeping it ticking over and uh, it'll all be, all be, you know, I keep saying word normal, but I keep thinking of it in inverted commas, you know, back to, back to, when, let's say when we can all be together again. When we can. <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much, Jeff, and we'll speak to you soon. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye.